What's up YouTube? This is your Wee Bike Parts update for April 2024. Let's get into it. If you're into Super Cubs, Honda, small bore engines, or anything else, give me a subscribe. All right, I'm going to be doing these videos about once a month. That seems about the appropriate time for when parts come out. Let's get into it. Just a reminder, to find this information, you'll need to go to the Wee Bike website, then click Motorcycle Parts, then Honda, then 125, then scroll to the bottom of that next section to find the Super Cub. It's close to the bottom. First, we have the Over Racing Clutch Cover Protector, a basic dress up for your clutch cover. Comes in black or silver. At first, when I got the Cub, I thought I was going to do a bunch of matching anodized parts. Uh, I have an oil filler cap and some other stuff. But as time goes on, I think having the black as my accent color on the Cub is what I'm going for. I'm thinking about having the wheels powder coated black as well, and something like this would go great with that. Then again, this is just for style. There's no actual function to this product. Next, we have the Takagawa Speedometer Controller Kit 2. This product can correct the discrepancy of the speedometer display caused by changing the number of sprocket teeth, tire size, or brand. This kit comes with a dedicated harness for easy coupler on installation with no wiring modification required to be used exclusively with the stock speedometer. Next, we have the Kotako Ignition Coil Full Kit. This puts out an increased voltage compared to the stock coil. The description claims improved power, response, and fuel economy. However, there's not much power to be improved unless you're boring up. Throttle response seems fine to me, and it's never hampered my riding. And the fuel economy? I got 126 miles per gallon on my last fill-up. So for me, I wouldn't really necessarily be interested in this product, but if you have a massive amount of mods that require increased voltage, this could possibly be an option. And now we have the Honda USB socket type C. This is for a USB C type charger. You'll also need the socket attachment for this to work. So keep in mind if you have windshields or other mods, this may not necessarily fit. I'm glad Honda has an OEM option because the Facebook pages and other groups online, many people ask about these all the time. But just make sure that you purchase this and the attachment together because they go together. And the other thing people have been asking about online is the next product up. And that is heated Honda grips for those of you in cold climates. These are from Honda. I am on the Gulf Coast of Florida and there really isn't a need for these, but I know there's a lot of riders in the UK and other parts of Europe and these would really seem to come in handy for those cold and long rides. Next we have the Aspera brake pad set. This is for the front brake obviously and is made from aluminum. They report to have a greater braking power. Again, not sure if this is necessary. I've never had a single person complain about the performance of the braking system of the Cub, other than the complaint of actually having a drum in the rear. But other than that, nothing. But this could be a cheap replacement when you need it, though. Continuing on of the replacement part theme, we have the Aspera main stand spring. Pretty self-explanatory. And the claim that it increases the bike's stability when parked. I suppose this just replaces the factory spring. Along with that, we have the Aspera Deep Groove Ball Bearing, same as the last product, seems to be more of a quality replacement part as opposed to a performance upgrade. This particular bearing is 12 millimeters and can be used in the starting motor, transmission, camshaft, and on the right crankcase cover. And after that, we have the Takagawa Engine Guard Kit. So in my opinion, I wouldn't necessarily fault you for having this, but it seems like it would be more suited for the Cub Trail or other bike that could possibly see off-road use. I'm not saying you can't take the Cub off-road, but even just riding on dirty trails and roads, the stability is compromised heavily. With that said, I wouldn't worry about having that extra protection for your bike, but it looks kind of cool. And finally, we have the Isada Low Screen. Interesting that it says low screen because I feel like this is the largest windscreen I've ever seen on the C125. It's 600 millimeters high and for you Americans out there that's a little over than 23 and a half inches so almost two feet. If you're looking for a monster windscreen on the Cub this is probably going to be what you want. However the aesthetic has a lot to be desired because it's kind of ugly. 